Yeah, you know what's what makes these different is the the front wing, the fuselage, and the back wing are all one piece. Right. And the, the connection point here is really really steep. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, I just got the Bike Slab 600. Uh huh. I'm loving that wing. I mean, I just, like, just this weekend, it was the first time I really got to try it. So, how is the 600 different from this one, the uh, 540? You know, it's the, the 600 isn't that much bigger, but it has an amazing amount of glide to it for its size. And I was really impressed with how far I could glide. I was even thinking I could try the Subwork 600. I mean, if I could get, if I could get up, I can keep going. It feels like it glides really well, yeah. Maui conditions. Yeah. I actually tried Ken's 800 with my wife's wing board, and I paddled all the way from Boulder to Chicago. We're not getting out. <laughs> on the, I paddled the whole way. On the, on the which size was that again? It was the 800 with oh, the board. The board had way too much rocker, it was short and fat, and I turned all the wing boards that are long as me. I'd like to try it again. With the and then the mast you're using a 96. 96, and I just got an 86 for my wife for her birthday today. And uh, she'll fly my 600. Yeah, I got the 102 mast, and I like that. I mean, it's nice to have, like, when you're down with it, it's nice to have an extra, extra um, hard to wear. Yeah. You know, the guys on Maui are using shorter masts. Adapter, and then I was using those hand hand screws, you know, oh. and um, and it was good because I had to change it, you know, because it was the first time I used that foil on the board. But um, but then, like every time I touched down slightly, it would be like the brake, like at a high speed, it feels like it's just hit, you're hitting the brakes, you're just going over the handlebars. I, I oh, it's so much drag, so from that totally noticeable, especially if you, not so much if when you're starting. But when you're dropping down at high speed, it's, it's actually kind of dangerous. <laughs> yeah, so definitely for that, this looks like a much better, um, much better connection, or you know, much lower drag. And yeah, it makes sense that you can be able to get up a little bit quicker too. But... I got these longer straps on here too. They're North Shore Inc. NSI. You get them out of the gorge. Yeah. But you know, when I'm just cruising along, going upwind, I might have my foot here, and then at speed. I'll put my foot all the way forward because it seems to generate more lift the faster I go. Uh, okay. You have to put your weight a little bit more forward as you're going faster. Yes. Have you, have you, have you timed yourself the speed, like the maximum speed you can get with this uh, boat? You know, with the water speed app, yeah. uh, the highest I've ever gone, which was actually on the 600, was. Uh, 
that's just the little burst. Just the momentary speed, not sustained. 53.2, do you know what that is in miles per hour? Or that's kind of what I usually have? I think it's right around 30. That is miles fast. That's damn fast. For sure. It's, you know, when you drive with your car, it's not fast. It doesn't seem fast, but on the water, it is. Yeah. Yeah, no, that's um, really fast. Cool, well, yeah, it's a nice looking car too. That's the one you, you were showing in that interview too, right? Like the one you use in the race? Yes. Yeah. It's solid. Yeah, Mark makes a good for it, huh? But did, I thought it didn't have the plate mount, but it, did, did it always had the plate mounts on it? Or on the this sport? One? Yeah, this one always had them, yeah. Well, I've always had the. Yeah. 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 I've always had that. But you know, I've never used them. <laughs> So pretty much since you got these foils, that's all you use? I've been riding the 600 and this, and when I teach on Maui, I often use the, the go foils yeah. on just the bigger side so I can go slow right down and stay right next to my student. Yeah, makes sense. Nice. Yeah. Alright, yeah, and now you're letting someone else try out that, that your wing? Walk us through a, a dive for a beginner. Oh, that's hard, Robert. <laughs> oh, come on, you're a teacher, you can do it. <laughs> okay, on uh, a dive, you want to keep the wind alive with the nose of the board. So as it turns downwind, the board is downwind. Also, downwind. Common mistakes to turn downwind and still have the wing. Oh. Uh, okay. Anything, you want to transition the wing head of the board so it's actually the board around. The other thing is when you come around on foil, you see your toe side, don't make the mistake of trying to switch your feet on foil. Lay on the board, switch your feet by stepping forward. Back and then start again to get on foil. Okay. And the more you do it, the less time you'll touch down in the water. The point that lean forward, step back, hey, I never touch down. Again, so you're saying the wing, uh, you want if anything, you want it ahead of yourself basically so it helps you turn turn you around. Yeah, okay. Every, every transition, dive or tack, you go from one wing to you backwards basically yeah so you get fancy and you set the wing over for a flying but in the beginning they stay together okay yeah then the other is when you come around through the turn and your toe side don't try to see How do you switch your feet? I step forward and step back. Because if you were to step back, you're going to wheel you off the back of the board. Right. So by leaning forward, you're going to land the board, switch the feet, step back, and then kick it back up on foil. Okay. That's if you're, you know, windsurfers switch their feet every tack. If you're coming from a prone surfing background and you favor So when you're going into the jive, when do you let go of your backhand? 
Like, when, when do you know to let go of your backhand? You know, it, it depends on what kind of diet you're into. Generally, I'll, I'll power halfway around the corner and halfway down the end. Yeah. And then switch my hands. Other times, um, I might feel a little more early. I don't know. That's a tough question. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, I, I guess when, you, when you're turning down, when there's less pressure in the wing, right? So then I guess when you feel the pressure kind of diminishing, that's a good time to let go and switch your hands, right? When there's less pressure in the wing. Yeah, when their apparent wind is near zero. But yeah. in lighter wind like that, especially when you're, especially when you're catching up to the wing, that's when you can change behind the guy. Definitely Yeah. Yeah, I watched that video that you had about the Heineken drive and I've been doing those drives and it's actually a nice way to, um, yeah, not um, not get kind of backwinded when you're switching the wing, right? It's yeah. more favorable in lighter air. Yeah. You know, when you, when you outrun the wind and, and you turn down wind and get backwinded, that's when you want to do the, the Heineken drive time. Right. It's harder to do it with higher wind. Right. Um, and you want to get your apparent wind speed down to near zero. Okay, so maybe sh show us how you do the Heineken drive, just do a demonstration here. It doesn't work too much wind yet, because you get backwinded. I'm going to flip it over, and then bring the wing around, Yeah. I'll Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, because... Yeah, so you need that apparent wind to be reduced from turning downwind, basically. Yes. Cool. Thanks, Alan.